In this episode, I'm going to show you how I fly the Assault Frigate. This is the captain. Brace for impact. So the Assault Frigate is an odd exception. There's actually only one variant, the Assault Frigate B. Now you might hear some, some mad people tell you that there's another variant called the Assault Frigate A, which actually is 10 points more expensive, has an extra blue dice out the front and an extra blue flak. They're wrong. Just don't. We've tried, okay? We've tried to make the mythical beast work. It doesn't. It doesn't exist. Assault Frigate B or nothing. But let's check out the Assault Frigate B. So it's got six hull, it's got a brace, an evade, a redirect, it can go to speed three, although it's not super maneuverable. It has three command, three squadron, four engineering, has two red out the front and rear, three red and a blue out each side. It's 72 points, it has an officer slot, and a weapons team slot, an offensive retrofit, a defensive retrofit, and a turbo laser slot. So the Assault Frigate is a really generalist ship in terms of stats. But usually when you see it in the wild, it's either kitted out as a gunboat or as a carrier. So let's check out those two builds. So if you're running a gunboat, uh, Guppy, you're generally seeing it with Admiral Akbar, because unsurprisingly, giving you those two extra red dice to bump you up to five. And you're also seeing it with gunnery teams. Those are the two like consistent, if you see a gunboat Guppy, that's what it's going to look like. So in a gunboat build, in addition to Akbar and gunnery teams, you'll normally either see Intel Officer or Ramus Antilles, um, and then in the turbo laser slot, these days you'll generally see a dual turbo laser turret, but you can still occasionally see TRCs. But obviously with the only one evade, it's not as good. So in regards to carrier builds, there's generally two kinds that you'll see. Uh, you'll see the, the circle drainer, uh, which normally has boosted comms and flight controllers, so it can stay out wide and buff the squads. And then the other carrier build you tend to see, which most of you should already know, is the Gallant Haven build. Um, so generally you'll see this just with Gallant Haven and either an officer like Torin Far or Adar Talon, depending on what they want the ship to be doing. Much like the variant, there is a long forgotten uh, second title to the, to the Assault Frigate, the Paragon title. Look, I used to run it a lot in Wave 0 or Wave 1 when the Guppy first released. It was great back then. It's terrible now. Don't consider it. Don't, we've, it just doesn't work. Don't try. Just give up on it, man. Now, generally, people like to add some upgrades to increase the survivability of their guppy. Um, and you'll see this on both gunboats and carrier builds. Uh, these include officers like Lando Calrissian uh, and then either ECMs or advanced projectors, depending on what they, what they want their defensive slot to do. Uh, the thing to keep in mind with this, I think Lando is currently, with the way the meta is, the strongest of these three, just because of the prevalence of um, token ignoring abilities like Sloan and BT Avenger. It, ECM used to be a must-take for me. Now I think you can kind of strip it and be okay. But again, this is a personal preference uh, and really comes down to what you feel comfortable with and what you want the ship doing. So at the moment in the current meta, the Guppy is kind of a maligned ship. Uh, with the, it's a generalist ship in a specialist world. People increasingly see it as, well, why would you take it when you know X ship does a better job for cheaper or does a better job and is a bit tougher for a little bit more? Uh, I, I tend to agree with it, but I, I still think that there is a place for the Guppy and you know you, you have to respect its track record. The Guppy is the ship of champions. Uh, it was present in the 2015 World Championship winning fleet. It was present in the 2016 both Australian Nationals and the World Championship winning fleet. And it was present in the 2017 World Championship winning fleet. It's a good ship. Um, and I think currently Gallant Haven is undeniably one of the strongest uses for it. it especially, you know, it's, it's a core component of the Riken 2-3 squadron build. The thing that's kind of made it really hard for the Guppy at the moment is basically BT Avenger. It's just really susceptible to getting one shot by, by that beast and therefore you don't see it quite as often. The way to deal with this is maybe it's a time to return to the boosted comm Guppy because that allows you to keep at arm's length where Gallon Haven really really relies on being right up in there. Uh, again, really good place, can run rings around it and it just comes down to personal ability. But I definitely believe that the Guppy is a true workhorse ship, and especially when you're coming into the game, it's a really forgiving ship uh, to, to come to grips with the game, to learn how to, to learn three ship commands, um, to plot navigates with a okay maneuver chart. 
um, and overall is a really, really good ship. So give it a try. So generally with the Gallant Haven uh, type carrier build, uh, obviously your squadrons, unsurprisingly given the way Gallant Haven works, want to stick extremely close to Gallant Haven. Uh, as a result, you'll often see players, and there's some really good footage of this. Uh, I recommend the, um, the preliminary final from 2016 Worlds, and I assume the Worlds 2017 final would, would showcase it a bit better than what I can talk about. Uh, you'll often see players be really aggressive with Gallant Haven. Obviously, they want their squadrons getting in there and doing damage, so as a result, they have to be aggressive with Gallant Haven to kind of shepherd those squadrons while still getting the benefit of it. Obviously, you can fly it in different ways, but this is one of the most popular. Again, cannot stress enough, go check out uh, the Worlds 2016 and 2017 videos because you'll see two different very skilled players both using Gallant Haven with slightly different squadron compositions, and it'll give you a really good understanding of how those players use that build. So both the uh, gunboat guppy and the long-range carrier guppy want to be flown in a similar fashion. Uh, you'll often hear, hear it referred to, I guess, amongst experienced players, but it's often referred to as circling the drain. And basically what that is, is you just want to keep your side arc uh, parallel to, you, to your opponent. And basically you're just running away from them in a giant circle. Uh, this allows you to keep your best guns on them, but allows you to stay at long range, uh, minimize the damage to yourself, obviously, and then, especially for a, a carrier build, you just let your squadrons do the work. Similarly, for a gunboat build, and again, why Akbar is really important, you just outdice them. You just go, I have five dice, you have four, but I have better, you know, you have better damage capabilities. And often, you'll have more than one gunboat just pouring fire on. Again, for this, those two builds, it's really just about making sure that nothing gets in your nose and blocks your movement, and you use that speed three to full effect to keep uh, damaging enemy units away from yourself. You're just keeping them at arm's length, doing your thing. So speaking of speed, uh, generally when you're deploying a guppy, you want to deploy at speed two. Obviously this is because it just gives you the most flexibility. With a simple nav command, you can be at either end of your minimum or maximum, and just allows you to take full advantage of that generalist capability. Another trick you can do, uh, depending on if you have Garm or Ramus or even a Comsnet flotilla, is deploy at speed one and then acquiring a token from one of these uh, methods, take a navigate first turn and then jump to speed three. It can be really useful for this to catch your opponent off guard because they already start to assume that you're sort of plodding along when suddenly you're like surprised and you're moving at full speed. Again, this can be really good for both uh, gunline and uh, far range carriers or even Gallant Haven as it just allows them to move unexpectedly, which in Armada is really, really important. So I would say right now with the way the meta is, the two best admirals if you're taking a guppy is either Admiral Akbar and doing a gunline guppy or General Riken and really compounding the usefulness of a Gallant Haven type carrier build. Obviously with General Riken, if Gallant Haven gets killed, you can just Riken zombie it and get another full, well, the rest of that turn's usefulness out of it, which can be really, really important in a squadron war. You can, however, I, I believe, um, I might have used it once or twice, uh, really get some big usefulness out of Garm because of the, the Guppy's generalist build and high command value, which allows them to stack those tokens and really get some power turns going. But with again, with the way the meta is, if you're taking a guppy, really look hard and think hard about Akbar or Riken. So again, in summary, the guppy is a very well-rounded ship, uh, um, some would say a generalist ship, and it has two good roles for it available at the moment in the gunship and the two different variants of the carrier build. That's pretty much it from us here today at Master of the Fleet. Uh, if you've liked this video, you know, think about giving us some support on Patreon. Otherwise, you know, comment with your feedback or what ship you'd like us to do next. But in summary, this is Intel Officer Luke signing off. Get those guppies on the fleet, boys.